Hi, my name is Paul Church from Charity Stamp here in the UK. Thank you for joining me for another episode of YouTube Tuesday. So what are we going to have a look at today? Well today I thought I'd show you something different with our beautiful Pico dies. Um, so I've got the nested circles and I've got the nested squares um, and I'm going to use them in conjunction with their coordinating plates. So again, what they've been designed to do initially were to work with parchment craft to give you that beautiful pico type edge all around your matting and layering but i thought i would do something different with it although i'm still using parchment this can also be used on paper as well so if you've got any of our beautiful designer papers this looks absolutely stunning so let's have a look and see what we're going to get up to let me bring in two different colorways so here we go. So we've got the beautiful um, bright blue, which is really nice and vibrant. And then we've got a more softer tone of like greens and oranges. And what I'm gonna do is for the demo is I'm gonna use some pink parchment. So how do we get started? I think what I'll do first is if I just hold this up to this camera here, then hold it at an angle, you'll see that it's all three dimensional. Okay, so. How do we get started? The whole of the flower is made out of one sheet of um, designer parchment, eight by eight. So for this one, I'm gonna be using the Rainbow River, but we also have Indian Summer, Shenandoah, um, what's the other one? Rainbow River, Shenandoah, Indian Summer, and Northern, how can I forget Northern Lights? That was the very first one that Barbara designed. So let's have a flick through. So when you look through here, you'll see you've got a beautiful range of different colorways. So I'm gonna go, hmm, decisions, decisions. Well, to be honest with you, I've already made my decision because I've already prepared it. So I'm gonna go with this lovely, bright, vibrant pink color here. Look how vibrant that colorway is. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we need seven circles. So this is where the um, picots come into play. You could use normal circles. Um, you can get that we also do them, um, the circles just with a plain edge, but I think having that little pico edge gives it that little sort of touch of luxury. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my um, piece of parchment and I'm gonna cut it down to size first so that we can cut out several at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, it's about seven and a half centimeters. So I'm gonna cut three strips of about seven and a half centimeters, or maybe not, maybe it was six and a half. Where's my bit of paper gone? It was six and a half. So that one will be fine. So I'm just gonna adjust this. Let me just see my circle to make sure it's still gonna fit on. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so rewind, not seven and a half, six and a half. That is me getting carried away. Then what I'm gonna do is now cut them down into six and a half centimeter squares. Okay, so I've got two there. I've got another two here, and then another two there. So this is gonna give me six of the squares that I need. And then if I cut this one down, I'm gonna cut this one down to six and a half as well and I might as well do it on the last one at the same time. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we need seven squares to make our flower. So I'm gonna bring my um, Gemini into play. So I've got my clear mat at the bottom, um, and then I've got like a document holder. Um, this was an idea by Dee Paramore, and what that does, it helps protect your plates, and makes the plates last longer. Um, and it also, it's good for sort of like if you want to lift off and sort of move bits around. So I'm going to put my designer parchment onto there and I'm going to cut out three at a time because I feel brave. So I'm going to pop those onto there. And because I have cut that a little bit tight, I'm just going to use a little bit of um, low tack tape just to hold them into place because what I don't want them to do is to start moving around when I put it through the machine. So my next is the frosted plates. Then I've got the magnetic shim as a shim. I don't really want magnets if I make a mistake. And then the clear plate on top. And then we're just gonna run that through the machine. 
Okay, so we'll open up our sandwich and we'll just gently release that from there and remove the low tack tape carefully. So there is three of my circles, so I'm going to pop those to one side, that's my waist. Then I'll bring another three sheet little squares into play, turn those over and pop those down and I think I'll use a new bit of tape for this one and then I'm going to pop that onto there as well and we'll run that through the machine as well. Okay, so reveal the sandwich again and reveal the next three. So again, gently peel that off and pop that to one side and I've now got another three circles. Okay, so I need one more circle, but what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna cut out a smaller circle at the same time. Um, and the reason being is if I bring this card in, let me show you this card here. Can you see these lovely little corners? And um, what I've done is I've taken a circle and folded it and I'll show you how to do that. And they're like little photo corners and it just adds a little bit more detail to the card. So these are perfect if you wanna put a photo on a card or if you're attaching parchment to a card, um, sometimes it can be difficult to, to attach it without seeing it. So I'm gonna pop that one on there and then I'm gonna take this one and then I'm gonna bring the smallest circle into play to do those corners, okay? So what I could do is actually if I take a pair of scissors and I've just chopped that in half. I should be able to cut all four out at the same time, he says. So I'm gonna pop that on there. I will use some tape on that one there, only because it's multiple layers. And I don't want it sliding around. That one I feel confident with, so we'll see what happens. Famous last words. So let's have a look, let's see if it's moved. Nope, that didn't move, that was lucky. So I'll pop that back onto there and we'll pop that to one side. Whoops, I've got the little one in there. Let's bring that back in. Slowly release, I've got one, two, three, and gently reveal the fourth one. So there we go. So we'll put these to one side because we use these right at the end. Okay, right. So that's our seventh circle. Pop those over there. Put that back on there so you don't lose it. It's always the smallest ones that you end up losing. Right, so let's pop those over there. Have a quick tidy up so we've got some space to work on. Right, okay. So here we go. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So the six are gonna form the, my flower. And then this one, the seventh one, is what I'm gonna attach it all to. But, I mean, they look really nice and they're nice and vibrant in colorways. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you what you can do now with the groovy plate that's been designed to work with the actual dies. Um, because what that's gonna do, especially with parchment, it's gonna bring in, if, let me just bring this sheet here into play. And you'll see, these are the ones I've already done. And you'll see I've got this beautiful white line going round on the um, design of parchment. So let me show you how I've done that. So I'll just pop those to one side and I'm gonna bring in the circle groovy plate. Now the way in which they've been designed is that when you um, cut out your circle, your square, your oval or your rectangle, on the plate, each plate has got this beautiful double line for each layer, but then it's also got the little ziggy zag, um, that's the technical term, the little ziggy zag, which is to replicate the pico cut on the die cut. So all I'm gonna do is you actually line it up so it sits perfectly within there. 
And then what that means is you can get that beautiful traditional look of the doubled lines or a single line on the inside of the Pico cup. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna wipe this with a tumble dry sheet. Okay, and I'm just gonna, I'm starting in the middle and just pushing out. And the only reason I'm doing that is because of the little Pico cuts on the, um, the parchment. And if I sort of go over that, sometimes the tumble dry sheet can catch. So I'm gonna line that up and I'm going to bring a groovy tab into play to hold that into position. Okay, to stop that moving around. And then I'm gonna take the one number one tool, which is from the, it's a 0.8. If you've got a Pergamano tool, you can use a one mil. And then all I'm gonna do is slowly emboss the double lines. Now you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm actually holding it in place and doing both of those at the same time. And then I'm gonna turn the plate and carry on. Now I find this is easy. I mean, you could use the groovy guard to hold it in place, but because this is a fairly small piece, I just find my fingers work a little bit better for that. And all I'm doing is I'm just doing it as a slow process. There's no rush because what I don't want to happen is the parchment to move. Now I've got to the point where the tab is covering up. So I'm gonna bring another tab into play to hold it in position opposite. And now I can remove the tab from the other side. And then I can continue on with my circle. Okay, so we'll do that. And then that one there. So now when I turn this over, I've now got two double lines. So let me just bring a piece of card into play and I'll hold it up to the camera so you can actually see the detail. So if I hold that there, and then we can see how we've got that beautiful double line on the parchment, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna repeat that process five more times, okay? And then you're gonna end up with, here's the six I made earlier. So I've got six here already done, and I've got a blank one and the blank one is gonna be used for assembly, okay? So how do I get a circle to look like a petal? Okay, well, I did some digging around on the internet and I saw that something and I thought, oh, I wonder if it'll work on parchment. And when I tried it, it did. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna do this several times and I'm gonna go, I'll actually probably come to the camera over here so you can see it a bit more clearly. So all I'm gonna do is fold the circle in half and crease, okay? Now, you'll be able to see through, I don't know if the camera will pick up where I've got those double lines. So at the top of those double lines, all you're gonna do is fold it back up on itself, okay? So what you've then got is sort of like a, a flat half a circle, okay? And all that is doing, that is gonna act as my guide for when I fold the parchment to create my petal. So then what I'm gonna do is fold that from there. I'll, I'll actually put this down. It might be easier if I just put it down to from there. So I'm gonna go from that point and I'm gonna gently fold the parchment back up to the point, okay? And then that is how you get your petal. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat that again. And I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna do it in sort of slow motion. I will talk actually, because it'll make sense. Fold in half. So if I do it like that, I'll fold it in half and crease the parchment. Then if I look at the bottom, I'm gonna put my finger above the double lines and I'm just gonna bring the parchment and fold it up to create a flat semicircle, okay? Then I'm gonna open it up and then I'm gonna turn it over. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger here where that crease line is and slowly peel open the circle. Oh, 
this is really when you when you're doing it in front of somebody and they're looking on it in front it's a lot easier than trying to do it to a camera so there we go so that's our second petal okay and then I'll repeat it again so in half you'll notice that I always have this I don't know why it's just in my head I always have this straight line to this side so when I bring it up and fold so if I do all of that process first Once you've done it once or twice, what I'd suggest doing, rather than doing it on your beautiful designer parchment or paper, just cut out some circles um, on scrap paper um, and have a practice on that. Okay, so there we go. So I've got two I've already made and I've got four here where I've just turned the flaps up. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold those back. Because all it is is just to give me the guide. Okay, I'm going to turn it over, put my finger at the bottom of that crease, and then just peel open the circle. I've got another one there. And another one just there. And what you'll do, if you have a session, what I did when I was demoing these um, at a retail show was I just cut out loads and loads of circles. Um, and obviously when you look at the dies that are on the, um, in the set, um, you've got 11 different sizes. So you can have all different size flowers. You could go down to the tiny, can you imagine, look, if I did it on this tiny little one here, if I fold it in half, Helps if you don't have chunky fingers. And then all I'm gonna do, I've got no lines on there. I just wanna just fold a little bit over. Okay, so I've folded that over. And then if I fold, open up the, open it up, peel it back. Little delicate fingers are better for this, rather than my big clunky ones. But you can see the difference in the size okay so you can have a smaller flower as an embellishment or you can have a larger flower okay so now we come to the assembly part so 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 right so we had this seventh disc okay and I've cut it out of the same color parchment because it's easier when you're sort of assembling that you won't actually see what's behind. So to start off with, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna coat this in double-sided tape. So I'm using the Crafter's Companion tape runners. Okay. And then to start off with, what I what's great about this is that you've still got some time to maneuver it. So, I mean, if you was using paper, you could use like a wet glue as well. So I'm just gonna pop that one into play there. And then what I find is easier, if I open it up, and you know this little towel that we created, if I just put a bit of tape just on there, okay, and then I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna slot it underneath the flap and then push that down, okay? So again, I'm gonna lift that up and put the tape on there. And then, so if I show you from this angle, it might be better. So what I'm doing, I'm looking to see, I don't wanna go in too close because I'm gonna overlap this one. So I'm just gonna go in and just press down. Okay, so that's free so far. Now, what you'll notice as I've come onto this one, it's going to sit on top. So, what I can do is now just lift that one up because I've got that movement still to pop that one in so that, that hides underneath. And then I want some glue just on there. So, with parchment, you do need to be careful because once it's creased, it's creased. 
And now I'm going to pop that one into play just there. Now at the moment it looks a bit of a funny shape, but what I can do is because of the way in which the parchment reacts with the, the tape, is I can actually just move them around a little bit and reposition them. Okay, so let me pop that one just there. I can bring that one round. So you just move them around until it looks circular. Okay, so let me hold this up onto a white piece because it might, the colour will stand out a bit more. So there we go, we can see now we're starting to take shape with our flower. Okay, so we've done that, we've got our flower made. Um, and what we want to do now is finish off the rest of the card. So if I bring this blue one into play, you'll notice that this one is smaller. So you could, if you wanted to, do all different colorways in all different layers and you could have a beautiful sort of like multi-layered flower. It's just, it's all about sort of playing and learning and sort of seeing, does that work? Doesn't it work? So I've done that. So let's now assemble the actual card. So, 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 so. I've got a piece of square card and I'm going to take our Pico squares and let me see. So that's going to be that size. So I want that one for my white card and then I'm going to use the next one up for my design parchment. So I'm going to go back to my Rainbow River. I'm going to flip through and find the same. And then I'm going to cut that out of there. So let's just run these through the machine. So we'll do a bit of fast forwarding while I do the boring part. Okay, so I've now got my piece of parchment. I've got my piece of white card. Now I could, if I wanted to, because the parchment's so beautiful, I could actually cut some more circles out of the middle part because I'm going to cover it up with another piece of card. But the choice is, is yours. Once, I think once you start doing these flowers, it becomes very, very addictive. Um, so it'd be a shame really to waste that inside. So I'm going to bring one of our card blanks into play. And we're going to use the tape runner to attach this onto the card. So I'm just going to go around the, the edge. And what's great about this is using this beautiful design of parchment and the tape runners, I can go right up to the edge and it won't show when I stick it down onto the card blank. So I'm going to position that just there. So there we go, you can't see any tape there whatsoever. Then I've got my card blank. So in, by using the Pico dies, it gives it that more of a luxurious finish and it ties it in with the flower as well. So I'm gonna pop that there. So that's now in place. Now the next thing what I wanna do, I wanna give it a bit of a finishing touch. So I'm gonna bring in the luxury brad. So I've got mine in a pot. So I'm just gonna tip some of these out. So we do these in a beautiful sort of pinks and rose colors. Um, and then we've also got them in sort of like um, yellows and and stuff like that. So let's have a, I think a nice pink gem in the middle. I think that will work well. So I'm just going to pop those back into its pot. That's where I should have put it on a bit of paper, really. But hey ho. So just move. Oh, one always gets away. There we go. So I've got that safe. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure, so you, you can see I've still got some movement in that, but by using the brad, it's going to hold everything together. Okay, now I'm just going to take the groovy tool and push through just to make a hole. I'm going to take my brad and pop that in the middle. Wow, that was magic. That went from white to pink, from pink to white even. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know how I did that one. There you go. So I've now got a beautiful centerpiece for my flower. So that can now sit wherever I want it to sit. I could stamp a verse underneath if I wanted to. 
And then what I'm gonna do, because it's this is all different levels, it's quite difficult to put your tape on. So I'm actually gonna put the tape in the middle of the card. And then let's have a look, I'm gonna go just like that there. Okay, so that's all pressed down now. That's not going anywhere. Now the card that's lovely as it is, if I just hold this up to the camera, you'll see that you've got the crisp Pico lines all the way around the outside. But if you wanted to, you could finish it off those little corners that I showed you at the beginning. So what I've done, we saw earlier how I cut out four of the um, little tiny circles. So all you're gonna do is fold the circle in half. Okay, so you've got your semicircle, exactly the same as how we started off with the petal. But then all you're gonna do again is just fold it into quarters. So, so what it gives you is like a tiny little fan type of effect. And then what I'm gonna do is open it back up and I'm gonna put some tape on the inside and press it down. So there's one there. I've got three others I've already done that just need the glue sticking on them. So that's my four lovely little photo corners. And now, doesn't matter which way I have them, but, oh, I suppose it does, it depends on what colorways you want. I mean, that one's quite pink, there's a quite solid color. So maybe I'll go on to one, let's do another one that's got more of a pattern on it. So again, fold in half, and then fold into a quarter. Okay. Open that up again, pop a little bit of tape on there and press that down to stick. Now what I need to do now is put a little bit of tape on the back of each of these. Let's do it on that one there and on that one there. And then what you do is, if I hold this up, you now push he says, I won't hold it up, it'd be easy if I do it flat. Push that. Did I go right to the edge? I bet I went right to the edge. That was clever, Paul, wasn't it? Don't stick all the way around the outside because you want to be able to lift it up. <laughs> so, here we go. I'll see if I can adjust that. There we go, so that's that one there. The other option, if you have stuck it all the way on the edge, then you can cheat and just stick it over the corner. That's what I'm gonna do there. <laughs> oh dear. So if you do stick all the edges, there is always a way around it. And there we go, we've got the beautiful um, finished cards. So again, you could just put a sentiment on there. So if I bring in the other ones, just so you can have a look at the comparisons. So we've got the, the lovely pink one there with the additional lines on it. We've then got the beautiful vibrant blue um, with the photo corners stuck on correctly. And then we've got more of a sort of a, an autumnal um, type of colorways. And this is all using the design of parchment. Um, you can also use it with the paper as well. So there we go. Um, it's very, very addictive. Once you start cutting these circles out um, and you get used to that fold, hopefully, I mean, you can pause um, the YouTube video to see it in slow motion. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, today's tutorial. Um, if you have, please leave a comment below um, don't forget to like and subscribe. We do a YouTube every single Tuesday, hence it being called YouTube Tuesday. Barbara does a blog every single day and the details are at the bottom as well. And if you've liked what I've shown you today and you're interested in the product, then don't forget to check out the website www.claritystamps.com. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.